Today we're going to use ChatGPT to backtest intraday trading strategies. So the first thing we're going to need is data from intraday. So I'm going to grab some one minute data and maybe turn it into 5, 15 and so on and so on just so we can try different time frames. But let's go ahead and see what ChatGPT has to say about this first. Let's say build me a backtest because I want to backtest that. I don't want to just, I just, I don't want to take GPD's word for it. I want to, I want to see a backtest using Backtrader, Python and Python to create an intraday trading strategy that trades ETH USD. So let's make sure that these, these instructions are good enough. Build me a backtest using Backtrader and Python to create an intraday trading strategy that trades ETH USD using a momentum strategy. Let's see what it does. <laughs> an error. Great. Nice first. Nice first little show, ChatGPT. A little error. Okay, let's see what we got here. I was getting warnings earlier that it was on overload, so maybe things are taking a little longer to process, but this is already quite long. There we go. To build a backtest using Backtrader to create an intraday trading strategy that trades ETHUSD using a momentum strategy, you will need the following. Install Backtrader, already got it. So if you're following along, this is, this is actually more for you than me here, um, since I'm already connected to Backtrader. Import the necessary libraries, Backtrader, Pandas. So we'd import, let's just jump on over to our code editor. And if this, if you're new to coding or you don't know how to code, uh, don't, don't take it too seriously. It, it's not that hard to learn, just, just like anything else. Um, I didn't go to school for it. Obtain the ETHUSD data. I already have that. Uh, and then pan, you can use Pandas library to read in the data, Pandas data frame, and then have it on Backtrader. Define our strategy. So I was asking GPT to define the strategy for me. Um, for example, you could define a momentum indicator such as relative RSI. Create an incident Backtrader strategy and override the next method. Okay, let's go ahead and say, show me, show me the example. Please show me how to do this in code, in Python. So seven, run your back test. So I like that it goes ahead and explains everything. And look at this, it's importing all the necessary libraries now. So it looks like it's gonna be doing some coding for me. So df.read eth, USD data, so we have to pull in the data. We have to convert that data into a Backtrader data feed. That makes sense to me. And I'm gonna pretend like I've never used Backtrader here in this video, so you know I'll make some tweaks here and there, but I really wanna rely on ChatGPT to get me through errors and just to see how strong it can be because the way I look at it is if we can get this good enough, then it's like having a, a junior coder right next to you at all times that can help you out. So you can see it just wrote all this code. Let's go ahead and just try it. Uh, I'm just going to copy all of it. Well, I'll do it that way. And then we have to bring in the data. So I conveniently have some data here. And this is ETH one minute data for the last 60 days or something. Copy path. I know this data is super hard to get your hands on, especially for one minute, five minute, 15 minute, and so on. So I did make sure that it is in our algo trade camp where I teach you absolutely everything. Uh, there's links below. Teach you everything about algo trading and then give you this data source, which you can get any crypto, any time frame, which is pretty dope because that's very hard to do. And it's usually very expensive. So. I'm going to go ahead and now that I copied that, paste that in, this is where the file is. 
and I can just say print df just to make sure that everything's looking good. Time dot sleep. Import time. And let's see what this data looks like. Okay, it's all getting imported nicely. <clears throat> the columns. I can just look at here, I suppose. Daytime, all lowercase. That's one thing I was wondering about. Open, high, low, close volume. So this data looks good. Let's keep on moving. So thus far, everything's been written by ChatGPT. Convert data into a backtrader data feed. Okay, and then it made us a strategy. You can see if self.rsi is under 30, buy and if it's over sell so it actually went ahead and built us a simple strategy it's not gonna work but um, I'm happy to try it and then just kind of build from there I, I mean I shouldn't say that it's not gonna work I don't know I don't know until we run it but let's go ahead and see if this runs because now we have the data in there I have a feeling we're gonna run into an issue but we'll see Okay, int object has no attribute, pi date time. And I want to rely on chat GPT here. So I get this example, get this error. And let's see what it says. We'll just go back and forth, figure this out together. It's moving a little slower today. So I apologize on... Uh, GPT's half. So attribute error object has no attribute pi date time. Often is <coughs> caused because the integer is date time object. In the backtrader library, date time object are used to specify the time for each bar. If you try to use an integer value instead of a date time, okay, so looks like we need to convert our date time of it how do I fix the error if my data frame looks like this and then I'll just send in my data frame so it'd be cool if they had a stop thing here so it could stop coding As I said that, it looks like it's stopped. I think it's just having a hard time connecting to the, oh, the if you're still experiencing. to me regenerate response okay I'm just gonna say this try to have it zoomed in so we could see it a little better on video all right so how do I fix the error if my data frame looks like this and now it's gonna tell me exactly what type of formatting I need to do for the date time column it looks like the date time column in your data is already in a proper date time format so you should navigate in the attribute error Okay, well, the thing is, is we are getting the attribute error. So, if USD data equals data frame from date, time. Okay, so I'll just try this out. We're going to try a different setup for our data feed. Paste that in, and let's see what happens now. Okay, so string has no attribute to to ordinal. Okay, line forty, and then it goes to. Let's go ahead and see what ChatGPT says. 
now I get this error. Yeet. Let's see if we can take that awful spelling. String has no attribute to or. Running a little slow today, buddy. It's often caused by using a string as date time object when creating a back trader data feed. Mm. In the back trader library, date time objects are used to specify the time for each bar of data in a data feed. If you try to use a string value instead of a date time object, you'll get this error. I love how it teaches you, you know? <laughs> to fix this, to fix this error, make sure you're using a date time object to specify the time for each bar of data in your data feed. You can use the date time module in Python standard library to create date time objects. Da da da, command B. Here's an example of how you can do it. Come on, buddy. You got this. Network error. Let's see. Let's give it another try. I might just have to reset this then. That's too bad because we've done a lot here. Oh, there we go. Whew. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you yelling at me? Convert the date time column to a date time object. Okay, so this is different. We didn't do this part. I don't know what's going on with the screen, but thank you. I'm just going to say thank you because it's active weird. Okay, so now we have an error here showing. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. If you have further questions or need assistance with your back test, please don't hesitate to ask. Well, I do, as a matter of fact. Now I get. And I could have sworn we just did that. I think I need to refresh this because it's moving slow. I don't have time for my junior coder to go so slow. <laughs> Oh, it's like the time it sends to take a slack over asking for some help. It's funny, we got used to this pretty quickly, or at least I did. And it used to be fast. But I think it's just having a hard time because I think it's Monday. Yeah. Everybody's working today. Everybody's using their ideas from the weekend. Okay, let's see if this can fix the error. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a uh, generic CSV. I can kind of work around this because I do know Backtrader, but I really wanted to see if it could fix it. So we have two day time, day time, that's cool. Data feeds, data name equals DF from day time, DF date time dot max and then okay well that's that's not working buddy so I'm gonna say this refresh and let's give them all this code and let's I get this error let's say I get this error when I run the below code okay let's give them the error
I should give it the whole air, huh? That's the air, and then let's let's give it the coat. Let's just see what happens. Probably too much for it to handle, to be honest. My boy can't do it. Let's see what it has to say. It's moving slow, making my videos much, much longer than they need to be. But I guess it's faster than me just thinking through it. Actually, at this point, I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is. Not today, at least. It's struggling today. There must just be a lot of demand or something on the uh, server. Maybe my internet's slow? No. That model is currently overloaded with other requests. You can try your requests or contact. Dang, this is crazy. Pushing it to its limits. I'm gonna go ahead and run it again though. <laughs> oh, you can help me. This is how you can help me. Watch that, use the model. Okay, it looks like the issue is with the date time column of your data. In the pandas image constructor, you're passing in the date time argument as the entire data frame DF, and then specifying from date and to date arguments as min and max the column. You did that though. However, it appears that the date time column is being treated as an integer rather than a date time object. One potential solution is to make sure that the date time column is properly converted to a date time object using pd.toDateTime function. You can try modifying your code as follows. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. So DF, day time, two day time, got that. This is what we have though. Hmm. This should properly convert date time column to date time object and allow pandas data constructor to popular, properly use the min and max values of date time column as the from date and to date arguments. I hope this helps. Okay. I don't see a difference here. So bt dot feeds. I'm just gonna pop plop it in then. I don't see a difference. Let's see if we can catch one. Pandas data feeds dot pandas data data dot df dot data name equals df from date equals df date time dot min. Yeah, this is the same thing. The same thing. Alright, so what I'm gonna do here is What am I going to do here? Maybe I can try it this way, where I try it with a my own data. I'm still going to use the same data, but this time I'm going to say data, data equals. Well, I'll just say DF. It gets it already is using the DF. DF equals. Let's do generic. Generic CSV. Probably need to import that. So I'm going to do import import back trader dot feeds. Um, I think that was actually a from. Yeah. From. I want to import generic CSV data. Okay, and then let's pop in the data right there. And we'll just customize this because it doesn't seem to be working. So I'm gonna say data name equals this right here. And then I'm gonna say from date. Let's start it. I don't know when this data starts, but let's just do it from the start of last year. So 2022. We're looking for intraday strategies. So I'll expand this data obviously later if we do find something that is nice. And then we wanna say to date equals date time and I forgot about that last time whatever today is 2023 one ten. I need to 
bring in date time. Import date time. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then I'll put a comma here and say reverse equals false. I think that would organically say that, but now date time equals it should be the zero position zero open high low close volume so this is the data that I downloaded from from the boot camp and it's one minute data on ethereum and I might go ahead and make it five minute and like three minute data as well but yeah you, you can see here a huge bonus because this is crazy that I'm giving away my data source but it's in the boot camp for anybody that that wants to really crush it because data is the key to I will trade in for sure and having unique data with on small time frames is very hard to get so yeah you get that inside the boot camp there's a link for that below let's say date time is the zero position let's go ahead and say the close equals the one uh, the open open equals Mm. Oh, I think that's actually going to automatically. Now the open equals one. The high equals two. Open high. The low equals three. And I'm just counting the positions here. Zero, one, two, three. Close and then volume. So close equals four and then volume equals five and what else do we need oh we need to put in the format let's go ahead and put daytime format here DT format equals It'd be percentage year, I believe. Let's look at it. Percentage year, month, day. Percentage month, percentage day. And then it looks like there's a space and then hour, minute, second. Yo, why does it keep saying this? Wrapping and folding have been turned off for this large file. Okay, that's dope. Don't try that again. Now we want to do hour, percentage, minute, second. Let's see if that works. Because I was trying to rely on ChatGPT, but it, it played me. Let's go ahead and see here if this runs now. Oh, and I should have called that data because they called it data down here after converting it. So they converted it here from that to that. And I want to just say boom. And let's go ahead and see if we, let's say print data. And then time dot sleep. Let's see if we get past the data load. That'd be awesome. Type error module doesn't. Oh yeah, I imported that wrong probably. It's supposed to do from daytime. Date time. Can't call it module. Tricks are for kids. Okay, sweet. It works. Our data works. Thank you, chat, GPT, kind of, not really, but let's go ahead and see if it does the function now, or it does the back test. And we should get a plot at the end. So 
So after it runs, you can see here it, it does the creates the indicator here, RSI equals BT dot indicators dot RSI. And then it creates a buy order if the RSI is under 30 and a sell order if the RSI is over 70. So let's keep working with ChatGPT to figure this out. I'm gonna go ahead and say, thank you for the help. Thank you for the help, but this is our code now. Let's see what, let's see. I know it can't store it, but thank you for the help. But this is the code we are using now. I don't want to be mean. I didn't mean to say that. It's okay, it's okay. I apologize for the oversight. It looks like you are now using the generic CSV to load in your data, which is a good approach. Yo, thank you, I appreciate that. It looks like you've properly specified from date and to date arguments as date time objects and the DT format argument as a string that matches the format of the data field in your data. If you're still encountering issues, we're not, we're not, we're not. Okay, let's just run it then. See if this works now that we have solid data. Okay. So it looks like we ran into a little error. It says it doesn't match. Time data does not match format. Hours, minutes, seconds. You sure? minutes, seconds. And what did I write? Hours, minutes, seconds. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT because sometimes helpful. It looks like the issue is with DT format argument in the generic CSV constructor. The date time argument specifies the format of date time field in your data. And it looks like the actual format of date time field does not match the format specified in DT format. In your code, the DT format argument is set to year, month, day, hour, minute, second, which incorporates, which, which corresponds to a format year, month, day. However, the date time field in your data appears to be year, month, day, which includes colons between, however, the date time field in your data. Okay, to fix this, you can try modifying. Okay, I see, no. So this looks good. It's saying my data. So, however, the date time field in your data appears to be in the format year, 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 or year dash month dash day space hours colon minutes colon seconds and in my data at at this time <laughs> i uh it looks the same it looks right but to fix this you can try modifying the dt format argument as follows okay down to do that. Oh, I didn't put the colon. Jeez Louise. That's great. Having a second eye on things is quite amazing. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and run it back. Look at that. See? ChatGPT. We were hanging out earlier, but now it's doing great. Let's help me get to this on. Okay, 49. And it looks like it's moving faster again, too. I'm just gonna say thank you very much. Just wanna make sure to give it some good feedback as well. Okay, let's see what this one is. Looks like another little error. So, on the cerebo.run again. So the run function is down here. So it is trying to run the back test, which is cool, because it got passed 
you know, at least the data. Let's go ahead and see what they say about this one. I get this error now. I think this is a cool test because we really get to see if it can adapt and help us out. I do have a few backtesting videos inside of the camp, so if you are struggling with backtesting like ChatGPT is right now, definitely jump in and you'll learn exactly how to backtest any strategy you have, really. It's pretty dope. So it looks like you're encountering the index out of the range. There could be many reasons. There are several possibilities to fix it. Make sure the file data is correctly formatted. Okay. If the data file is missing columns or has extra columns, it could cause an error. Okay, that's a good hint. I didn't put volume in, huh? No, I did. So, okay, make sure the date time, open, high, low, close, and volume arguments in the general constructor are correctly specifying the indices of the corresponding columns in the data file. If any of these arguments are set to an index that is outside of the range, could cause the error. So we said 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks pretty chill to me. Let's go ahead and see the next one. Make sure that the date time field in the data file is properly formatted and that it is in a format that can be parsed by the date time module. If the date time field is not properly formatted, it could cause an error. Okay. So How do we want to approach this? We got past the data part. And at the cerebral.run, I'm just gonna I'm gonna Google this. Let's see if Google can handle this. Backtrader. I think we need to start here with this. So zero, date time, zero. The open is one, the high is two, open high. The low is three. But is there a space in between that low? No. The close and the volume. Low, close, volume. Close and volume. Is there any other data here? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so date time format. Date time open high low close volume. Let's go ahead and see what this error says. Oh, maybe it's because I didn't put open interest in there. I remember that from back in the day. Interest equals negative one. Let's go ahead and try it again. It worked. I think. Let's go ahead and have it print out uh, print out the ROI and the sharp ratio at end of the uh, back test. 
I think it's running right is it running yeah it's running right now something's running so that's interesting because that means something's working let's see if it comes back with an error or or not so let's talk about this for a second to print the roi return on investment and sharp ratio at the end of a back test in back trader you can use the cerebro dot broker dot get value method to retrieve the final value of the portfolio and the cerebro dot analyzers dot sharp ratio analyzer to calculate sharp ratio here's an example of how you can do it so let's go ahead and make sure to start working on that So this code right here is going to get the sharp ratio. But we also asked for the ROI. Not to be picky. All right, this is taking a long time to run this. Is it too much data? Maybe. it scared maybe it's quite the strategy here quite the strategy let's go ahead and start updating our code so it, this is all in there I really want to see the ROI too please show me the ROI as well Print the ROI and sharp ratio. Does it say ROI already? Yeah, my bad, my bad. It does say that. Print the final total. No, that doesn't give me the ROI though. It gives me the total. Oh, here it is. It did it. It did it. It did it. All right, let's see how it did though bad good wow it's a lot of trades I guess it's doing it on the one minute it actually doesn't look awful that's wild I mean it's not great or anything I wonder what our starting value was though Let's do this again. I want to run it back. I want to run it back, but I want to have this new data here so we can get some actual like feedback, right? Instead of network error. Jeez. I'm gonna just restart it. Let's give it another try. We're experiencing a lot. We're gonna make you experience more, buddy. Let's go ahead and say this below is our back test. Can you please add sharp ratio and drawdown percentage and ROI percentage? To it. All right, let's see what, it, oh, dang, I forgot to post the, the code. <laughs> no, 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 let's do it again. Let's, uh, let's run it back. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, copy that. And then here, let's go ahead and paste that in. And then I'm gonna copy all my code. Okay, to calculate the sharp ratio drawdown and return on investment ROI percentage, you can use the built-in analyzers tab. Okay, let's just go ahead and I'm just gonna try a code with it kind of. From back traders. No, that's not gonna work, buddy. We're gonna just do that. We'll copy paste. We got all the data coming in, which is great. That is corresponding with it. And we saw the back test, which is nice, and it built it. I obviously had to help it get the data in there, but 
now we have a base and ChatGPT built us a back test. So we won. We already won. We're already winning. And we're just gonna keep winning because we got, got more to do here. I wanna see what the shark was and I wanna see the return because I think that will be super, super duper useful. And then we can start like making it a better strategy. Oh, there's an error. Dang, we're really giving it too much, too much of a load from our side. I know it's already under high stress today, but we're gonna get this going. I saw what they wanted me to input, so maybe I should just start writing it out. So it says input that, import that, and then I'm just gonna start doing a little bit of my own coding down here. I know it's rare these days because we have our dear friend, ChatGPT. Did we set cache on here? Hmm. I don't think we did. Cerebro. Dang, it's, it's not, it's, it's copping out on us today, but I think I can handle this part. Well, I know I can. I was just really trying to show this off with 100% uh, chat GPT. Let's put, um, let's just put a 100,000. Set cache. And then we want to go ahead and set commissions because none of this really matters if there's there's uh, no commissions. Set commission. Did I spell that right? C O M M I S S I O N. And then we're going to say commission. Equals zero point zero zero one. I'm gonna do one five just to handle slippage. I know I could probably set slippage as well, but I'm not. So I also want to go ahead and do an all in sizer. So we put all of the you know it, all of the hundred thousand in at once. This sets all. So it's pretty easy to do. So we wrote dot add sizer and we say bt dot sizers dot sizers dot all in. And that's just pretty much saying use the whole balance every time. And then I'm gonna say 95%. Just in case. Just in case there's like a error or something. Let's see if this can get going. I'm gonna lean on chat GPT a little bit here. See if, see who can win. See who can win the race. So let's go ahead and also bring in those analyzers. Cerebro dot add analyzer. And then we'll say BT analyzers. Sharp, do I have that one in there yet? Maybe I didn't bring that in. Oh, look at that chat GPT beat me. It's pretty great. Import back trader dot analyzers. As BT. Oh, I see what it is. <laughs> As BT analyzers, so I did something. I did it a different way than they did. So I'm just gonna use their code because it's 
since we are finished, so we add the analyzers first. I was over here trying to raw dog the code and we got chat GPT these days. So that makes no sense. So let me delete this. I'm gonna keep the sizer because I didn't mention that or the commission. I didn't mention either of those things to, or any of those things to ChatGPT. I'm gonna add the analyzers here. Oops, this has to go after. Where's run? Okay, there it is. Let's go ahead and after the run, we wanna get all this info. And the result, what did they say the result is? The result equals run. I didn't see this one. Did we get the ROI up here? No, we did not. ROI. Huh. Backtrader.analyzers import. Okay, I see what's going on now. Maybe. So I'm not seeing an ROI pop up here. Returns, but maybe this is they changed it. Total average compound annualized right calculated logarithmic. This might be it actually. Because I don't see ROI come up here. I'm gonna say use something different to calculate ROI and just send me that code. ROI does not import from the back trader module. So now we're really pushing it. Even though they have this big red flag saying, stop using this so much. Okay, ending balance, starting balance. Let's see what does that. Starting cash, okay, I don't mind this one. I don't mind it, I don't mind it. Where should we put it though? Starting balance, ending balance. I think it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, it has to be after. Starting balance, whoa, where did they put it? Print the ROI. For example, to catch the ROI. Mm, I don't like this way then. All right, I'm just gonna do it my own way because I want to get this back test going. I feel like we're already successful being able to run the back test. I just want to see the data now, and the drawdown we have. ROI, we don't have that yet. Where do we do the run? So results are right here. Results equal that, I believe. Let's go ahead and just double check. Result. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and get the ROI. We can't get the ROI. So what did I used to do? I calculate it a different way. I've set all my back tests up, so like I have back to it, I just change the strategy. So I, I rarely use this part of back trader, but that's why I was kind of relying here on chat GPT a bit.
Oh, you know what? That's funny. Okay, I'm just going to do that. I don't even need ROI because I can mental math that pretty easy. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the final or I want to say value and that's the after. I want to say I want to see the final value. And that w I can technically figure out the ROI if I have the final value, right? It's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to say value equals. I want to do, I want to make sure this is an integer. Actually, I want it to be a float. No, no, I don't need it. A float. I'm going to do an integer because it's going to be a big number. And I don't care about the pennies. Cerebro dot broker dot get value. That should give me the value. And then I want to make it like this final equals. We need to put some commas in it so we can read it. I guess that depends on where you live, but that's how I read things. Okay, and print final value equals final. All right, so now I think this should give us the sharp ratio because we added it up here. We set the cash, we set the commission. We added the data. We go 95% in every time. And now we can actually get a, let's, let's put a starting value in here. Print F starting value equals starting value all right starting value equals 100,000 let's go ahead and put in starting value there and now let's run this and while it's running I want to work with ChatGPT on a better strategy. Make it, I want to make it better. Use Bollinger Bands in order to build an intraday trading strategy. Let's say you use Bollinger Bands and the 20 SMA in order to build a better intraday strategy we can backtest. And this is where it gets fun because now, theoretically, if you give it good enough strategies, essentially, it can build it for you. But we have the data now on the one minute for like two months, which is a pretty good amount of data for a one minute, you know, time frame. I think the next thing I want to do here is turn that into three minute data and maybe five minute data as well. Just different segments of data. And then we can just, just like massively test different strategies because, oh, item collection doesn't have ROI. Dang. Dang, dang. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? It's right here. Um, but yeah, depending, I, I don't know if ChatGPT is going to find us anything revolutionary just by asking it simple stuff. But if you put in inputs like this, like I said, okay, now use Bollinger Bands, um, use the SMA, and I can kind of guide it in order to find a good strategy that works and it. The way it's going to find it is really based off of how I guide it, but at the same time, 
I have to have that unique data in order to run the strategy against and be able to do it very quickly over and over again. Because we'll have to tweak, tweak. And the thing I think that's super helpful with ChatGPT here is that it can help us write the strategy out really quickly, like this. I just have to copy over this now. So I want to make sure that I don't have ROI anywhere else. Okay. Because that kind of hurt us last time. So this looks like an interesting strategy. Uh, it pretty much says if data.close is under the Bollinger Bands, then buy. Elif data.close is over the Bollinger Lines top sell or if we're over the SMA buy data.close is under the SMA sell. Okay, so it's a pretty, <laughs> pretty simple strategy again. I'm just trying to think where this can be helpful, you know, like it actually took me a little bit longer to write this back test here. And it's not entirely ChatGPT's fault, but I knew how to back test already. So it kind of threw me on, on a loop because I was trying to do it a different way. But I want to find a way to use ChatGPT. And if you're interested in this type of stuff, you know, using AI to algo trade, definitely jump into the bootcamp because, you know, you become part of the, the Discord, which is super powerful. A bunch of algo traders like yourself and I. I teach you everything you need to know about algo trading. I give you like seven, or maybe even more algorithms. And then you get all the data. Whoa. This is an awful back test. So this is a bad strategy. At the end of the day, don't do it. RSI. This is interesting though, because it looks like it changed. Right? Because last time it showed a lot of buys and a lot of sells. But maybe it ran out of money here. Yeah, that's what it did. So the strategy doesn't work and it went negative 16 billion. So at the end of the day, if, if you're going to build an RSI strategy, I would use it as an indicator because on this one minute data, it doesn't work. Um, that's not to say it, it might not work on larger data or different time frames. I doubt it because it's a pretty simple strategy. But this was cool because we got ChatGPT and with a little bit of tweaking, we got him to write a uh, back test for us. And I think this is where the fun begins because we have this back tester here and we can put in our own strategies, work with ChatGPT to build new strategies. And if you want to see more strategy back tested videos like this, just, just let me know in the comment section or just tap the like button on this one. That's a good signal as well. And like I mentioned, if you want all my code, seven plus algorithms, and this crazy data source where I'm able to get this one minute data for Ethereum or any other altcoin, it's just super expensive usually. So jump on in and I'll see you inside of the Discord and we'll keep jamming.